Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Eric Hernando. I actually wear a few hats. I'm a detective with the Homedale Police Department. Uh, I've been a volunteer firefighter for a bunch of years. I'm also Homedale's Emergency Management Coordinator. Uh, about a year ago, I started Homedale's drone program. Uh, we have, uh, that I'm aware of, the first drone program in the area. Uh, but like I said, uh, it's only been up for about a year. And so I like to get out and talk to people about the program. I think it's exciting. It's new technology. But what I found is that when I tell people about the program, they kind of get skeptical. You know, what, what are the cops using these drones for? Uh, I've also found that after just a few minutes of explaining exactly what we're using it for, they walk away seeing the value and the benefit to the community. So that being said, I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today, and hopefully in the next 15 minutes I can convince you of the same. Okay, just a little bit about history. Drones have been around for a long time. Um, they have military origins. And I would say in the past, in the last six years, the technology has taken drones to a whole new level. Drones are now able to stay up in the air for upwards of 20 minutes. And the video that we're getting from these drones is basically cinema quality. Okay? Um, obviously, aerial photographers and videographers became interested in them. Okay, a lot of hobbyists. Anyone in the audience have their own drone? Anyone? Okay, a lot of hobby drones out there. Uh, commercial uses. And finally, public safety. Okay, um, police departments, fire departments, search and rescue teams really see the value uh, of a drone. The FAA said that currently there's only about 1,000 drones being utilized by police and fire departments around the nation, which only constitutes about 1% to 2% of the total number of public safety agencies. So just based on that number, okay, it's clear to see that drone use by public safety is in its infancy. Okay? But you're going to see that change. <clears throat> One of the reasons we love the drones is the cost factor. Okay? As you can see up on the screen, the cost to purchase and maintain a drone versus a helicopter, which is basically what we're replacing, is tremendous, okay? I mean, vastly, a, a vast difference. Uh, training, it only takes a couple months and 500, about $500 to train a drone pilot, where it takes months and months of training and thousands of dollars to train a helicopter pilot. Finally, deployment time. If I get called to a scene, I could have my drone up in the air and transmitting video in under five minutes. If I were to ask for a helicopter, it would be at least an hour to get that thing there and in use. So you can see the advantages. So I know I've been calling it a drone for the past few minutes. We actually refer to it as a UAV, which is an acronym for an unmanned aerial vehicle. And the FAA said it's basically an aircraft operated without the possibility of human intervention, either within or on the aircraft. Okay, so that's pretty self-explanatory. Two types of drones out there. You have a fixed-wing drone, which resembles an airplane, and then a rotor drone or a multi-rotor drone, which resembles a helicopter. I would say that 99% of drones in public safety are of the rotor type. So this is our drone. It's called an Inspire One. It's made by a company called DJI, they're out of China. I would say they have the uh, market share of all the drones out there. It's doing its little startup. Weighs about seven pounds. Get maximum altitude of about 1,600 feet, does 49 miles an hour, and a range of about 1.2 miles. Okay, so that's pretty substantial. As far as flight times, we're seeing about 22 minutes average. And that's going to depend on how we fly the drone. All right, if we just send it up and let it hover, it's going to be able to stay out there a lot longer. If we fly it around, a lot of movement, that battery time goes down. Some of the parts of the drone. We have a frame. All right, the frame is going to depend on the make and model of the drone that you're using. Okay. This particular drone is a quadcopter, okay, which means it has four motors and four propellers, okay? 
On the back here, you can see blinking green is the battery. That's the power cell to uh, power the drone. And then finally, right on the front, is a three-axis gimbal camera. And I'll talk about the cameras in depth in a minute. Big part of the system is what they call the ground control station. Okay? This is basically how the pilot is going to control the drone. Okay? Um, if you want to take off and land, forwards, backwards, sideways. Okay? You see the antennas on the back? We control the drone via the ground control station via radio waves. Okay? That's how it works. One of the other things is the video transmission. Right? There's a technology called LightBridge and OcuSync, which provides real-time, uh, again, almost cinema quality, real-time video from the drone to the ground control station. Okay, that's, an actually, uh, that's actually what a screenshot looks like of what the pilot is looking at. Okay, as you can see, um, pretty good-sized picture there. Uh, along the top, it's giving you flight status, how many satellites you're connected to because it does use GPS to position. Along the right side, I don't know if there's any photographers here, exposure for your camera and video. Okay, and along the bottom, some of the flight information, how far is it from the ground control station, at what altitude is it flying. Okay. Power source. Okay, these drones use lithium polymer batteries. They typically take about an hour to recharge, and again, it's an average about 22 minute in flight time. We keep about eight of them, so we can keep swapping them out and we can charge them on scene. Cameras, okay, we can actually interchange the cameras on these drones. Most of the time we have what they call a daytime zoom on the drone, and that's gonna be, uh, Again, a three-axis gimbal, which allows for stable video. That's going to take video anywhere between 720p and 4K, which is cinema quality. Bottom right, you have a thermal camera. We use this a lot for our search and rescue missions. That's uh, obviously going to give you a thermal picture. If you have a bad guy who's uh, in a field, his heat signature is obviously going to be different from the background, and that's how you get the picture. The FAA, uh, they obviously have control of all civil aircraft, and they do have say um, in any drones used by public safety. When I applied for our program, I had to get FAA approval. Any town that wants to have a program has to get FAA approval. They have pretty strict guidelines on training and uh, guidelines on use. I told you that my drone could go 1,600 feet in the air. The FAA says I can only go 400 feet above ground level. In addition, okay, I told you it can go 1.2 miles away. Again, the FAA says that I have to operate the drone within visual line of sight. I have to make sure I can see the drone at all times, so I can't send it two miles away and operate it. Right? Finally, I have to use visual observers, okay, just two more sets of eyes on the drone to make sure it's safe. So what type of missions do we, uh, do we uh, conduct? This is just kind of a snapshot of some of the missions that we do. And I'm going to show you a video in a minute that kind of demonstrates what kind of missions we go on. But I think more importantly is I want you to realize what we're not doing with the drone. Right? Everyone wants to know, you know, are the cops going to spy on us with this drone? Okay? And the answer is absolutely not. Okay? We will never send a drone up to just do random surveillance in your neighborhood, you know, check out what you're doing in your backyard. The drone will always be used for mission-specific reasons. Okay? So if you take one thing away, it's not to spy on anybody. Okay, so I'm gonna play a video, and it's pretty cool. It actually shows the UAV in action and I'll kind of narrate as it goes. Okay, suspect apprehension, okay? A guy robs a bank, all right, he flees into the woods. We're probably gonna deploy the thermal camera and we'll be able to see where that suspect is going day or night and direct officers to apprehend that suspect. 
Okay, we have the capability to, to attach searchlights onto our drones. Okay, again, suspect apprehension, rescue, search and rescue missions. Okay, here's the first example of the thermal technology or FLIR. Kind of see how the person stands out against the background because we're detecting a heat signature. Okay, another example. You have a suspect standing there. I don't know if you can see it with the long gun. Okay, he really stands out. There's different settings on the thermal camera, but the drone directs the police officer in and he's able to make the apprehension. We actually can lift things with our drone. Our drone can lift up to eight pounds. Um, in this example, they're lifting a life jacket to someone that can't be reached. Um, we've lifted cell phones to a barricaded subject. There's a lot of uses for lifting stuff. Okay, search and rescue team is using the drone to lift a line to a victim. And here firefighters are lifting a, an SCBA bottle, a breathing apparatus bottle to a firefighter. Okay, again, search and rescue. I think this is uh, down south in some flooding. Uh, drones are being used down there to locate victims who are stranded on their roofs or in trees. Here they're using their daylight camera. I would probably have my thermal camera out for this mission. Okay, this is just a view of what the drone looks like in flight. Fire monitoring is huge, okay, especially wildfires. Incident commanders can put the drone up and see where the fire is, which way it's going, and that will help them direct their resources uh, to the right spot and avoid people getting hurt. You can see, I mean, the perspective you get is amazing. I know they're showing uh, this fire video with a daytime camera, but a lot of times we use our thermal camera for fire scenes. It can actually help you see hot spots in the structure. Right? Again, the fire chief on location can redirect his water stream to more efficiently put out that fire. In a minute, they'll show what a fire looks like from a thermal camera. Tremendous asset. Okay, there it is. That's a thermal view of a fire. You can see it really stands out. Okay, you can actually see up in the top right hand corner where it's a lot hotter, where the reds get, the orange gets really bright. Again, you can see hot spots here. I know FDNY just bought a couple of real uh, nice drones for this exact purpose. All right on the emergency management side, if there's a disaster, uh, emergency managers want to know what type of damage there is, flooding or houses destroyed. We can send a UAV up in the air and get really good uh, damage assessment information for any type of disaster. This looks like another search and rescue application. Okay, that's our Inspire One. They're being used all over the world. I heard about a story, uh, they're actually using them on the beach uh, by the lifeguards, and they're actually dropping life preservers out to drowning victims. So, I mean, the uses are endless. So, hopefully, you've taken away 
that we're not going to be using them to spy on you, and it's actually going to be a really great thing for the community. Thank you very much for your time. Woo!